Hey folks, it's uh, George Kovach here. I'm just uh, heading out to my backyard to prove to you that uh, there was a Halifax without snow about five weeks ago. There was a ton of snow here. Glad to see it gone. I'm looking forward to uh, being in Chicago in about a week's time and helping out with uh, the surgical airway workshop. What I wanted to just uh, briefly talk about is, and I'm going to borrow uh, the uh, term that uh, Mike Loria has used in, in one of his excellent um, talks called Making the Call, and, and specifically address the issue about the surgical airway. There's a lot of opinions out there in terms of what's the best way to do it, um, and a lot of discussion about when it's appropriate to do so, and I think most people appreciate it that uh, we're going to pull the trigger, if you will, when the, the patient is essentially about to die. And perhaps that's a bit too late. So um, to be more specific, we're talking about when you can't intubate and can't oxygenate. But where in that, in that slope, in that downward slope, do you actually pull the trigger? And I think too often we, we do it too late. Um, and to me, it's, it's not about a number, it's not about a, a saturation or a vital sign, it's about, about sounds. And those sounds to me are, are three. The first sound is the, the sound of ineffective mass ventilation. So it sounds like you're, you're passing gas in the unpleasant way um, and uh, you're ineffective mass ventilation. Most of us all know that sound. I'm not going to embarrass myself trying to reproduce that sound here. Um, the second sound is, is, is a tone change. It's the change in the saturations as they're falling. And unfortunately, the third sound is often a, a uh, um, person in the room, a nurse or, a, or, or somebody else who's calling the sats out as they fall. You know, that 89, 88, 87. But uh, those are the sounds that we need to, we need to act on. So it's, it's, a, it's a dynamic thing. We're not responding to a sat that's all of a sudden 76 or 82 or whatever arbitrary number that we, we uh, put to it. This is the, the important thing is that most of us will say, okay, sats are falling. We've got things that we can do, right? So we can, uh, we can perform two-person, uh, two-handed mass ventilation. That's usually going to correct the situation and put in an oral airway or we can uh, put in a, a superglottic airway and most of the time that's going to get us out of a pickle. But I, I think it's important from a mentality point of view is that when you do hear those sounds of falling sats and ineffective bag mass ventilation, your mindset is, I'm going to cut the airway. But before I do that, I'm going to give one shot at, at trying to optimize bag mass ventilation and one shot at putting in a superglottic airway. And that's a very different mentality than saying, okay, you know, I've got falling sats. Well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to optimize bag mass ventilation. Okay, if that doesn't work, then the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put down a, a superglottic airway. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to do a surgical airway. Um, it, it sounds like the same sequence, but it's a, a different mentality. In other words, if we do the latter one, we keep on trying to problem solve. And, and we're, we're, we're hesitating and we're delaying ultimately what needs to happen. So somebody's sats are falling, you don't have much time. Um, you need to definitely quickly optimize uh, mass ventilation. You definitely need to quickly try a superglottic airway. But before you do that, your mindset is to cut the neck and you should be directing people uh, um, in that direction and, and you should be moving, uh, moving uh, equipment and, and and resources to help you perform that. So a couple thoughts on, uh, on uh, again, making the call in terms of uh, using steel to help manage the airway. Talk to you and looking forward to meeting people in, in, at SMAC in Chicago.